One thing we haven't spoken about is training splits. Is it chest and back? Mm-hmm. Is it chest and triceps? Yeah. What's, what is the, from a science perspective when it comes to yes. splits? Yes. Let's go to the test tubes and the measuring devices, you know, old science. Uh, there are a few things I like to consider theoretically before designing a training split. One of them is within the context of the workout itself. When you ask like, what am I doing today? Just make sure whatever you're training gets high quality training. If you pair it with whatever else you're training. Here's an example of one that does not happen. You do legs first, and then you do chest. For many people who are advanced and training hard, you know this, after legs, motherfucker, you ain't doing shit. (laughs) You might be peeling yourself off the gym floor, the urine stain below you, maybe even a shit stain if you really squatted heavy. You're not doing anything but going home and eating and, and drinking and recovering. So legs and then chest just might not make any fucking sense. On the other hand, if you have something like biceps and legs, bicep training doesn't make you that fucked up. It's just not a very big muscle. It doesn't make you systemically tired. You can't do it after legs because you got nothing after legs, but you might be able to do it before. So you may be able to do biceps first, legs second. That's a workable split in and of itself. That's part one. So muscles need to gel well together. Here's another example. If you do back first and then legs after, can be done, but generally your lower back and mid back are now so tired. You're going to be all of your squats and good mornings. You're going to fold over because your back, not your legs. You have fucked up a limiting factor. And now that's the really big problem. So as long as the exercises play well together and the muscle groups play well together, which is to say you can train everything you want it hard and the muscle itself is limiting factor. There's no wrong answer. Someone, someone's like, is it cool to like train chest with back or is it chest with quads or Hey, as long as you can fucking hit all the muscles hard, Mm -hmm. no wrong answers. The other construct that we use in program design is if the muscle has been trained already, the next time we train it, is it recovered enough to train again? So for example, if you say, okay, here's my program. All right. I'm training three days a week. Okay, great. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And it's chest, chest, chest. I have to ask you the question of by Wednesday, what is it that you're doing with your pathetically deflated super weak chest? Nah, you're going through the motions. You're super fucking like, ah, this sucks. If you simply move the routine to Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you can hit chest all three days and there's enough time to recover between. So one thing that I look, if I'm looking over someone's program, I look for what I just generally like heuristically describe as symmetry, like where I look for each individual muscle group, like quads, where are they at? 